Now uh, a good idea for digging the holes is if you just mark out your um, the line of your tunnel and just every 1500 then put down two bars on either side of where your hole needs to be and then you just dig your dig your hole at that point then because uh, it's difficult to dig with the line there so when you take away the line you, you know where your hole is going to be now you dig, or, dig your hole between your bears you can see there bears helping me because I know where to dig um, you go along in here you drive in your first ground peg now there, there's a self tapping screw here which is marking ground level so come up and, so, and then set a line up so that the, the line is just say a couple of mil below the top of the, the ground peg and then that will tell you how to, you can drive all your ground pegs into the same level as this the idea of that then is if, you're, if your tunnel is on a slope your tunnel will go with the slope rather than your hoop spin up and down and moving on here then what you do then is you drive you see this one set here now against the line you drive three rebars one two three and this forms an anchor it just saves you putting in loads of concrete and um, if you ever want to move your tunnel at least you won't have a load of concrete to dig out you can just dig dig this out it probably weighs about 10 kilos and throw it in the skip now they're very secure uh, it's actually very difficult to even dig them out so you are perfectly safe your tunnel won't be going up over the mountain now the next bit is the concrete in your posts just have the concrete nice and wet so because it goes in around all your your rebars um, it's important to put a level on this both ways to make sure that it's level and um, the next step then is to put up our frame and we're going to use uh, footage from uh, a previous tunnel we put up uh, a poly tunnel but uh, it's exactly the same frame so we'll be using that just to demonstrate how to put up the frame yeah now uh, lay your two hoops on the ground keep the long straight edge to the outside curve it comes to the middle and then you connect them on the ground now check them that it slides in easily sometimes there's a bit of a ridge on them there and you have to walk out the ridge with a bit of a file now usually if it goes in easily there the ground pigs will have no bother going in either <coughs> but just check them make sure they're all clear if you're trying to slide them down and he won't fit they won't have a problem This one is fine. So what we want to do is lift it up in the air in such a way that it's actually like this. Because when it comes in together and locks in together, it's very hard to twist this out afterwards, you know. So it's okay to twist it a little bit if we can get it fairly right. Slide it into one. Slide it into the other. And then set him at the right angle about here. Yeah. The, the bar for the ridges, as we take the ridges, is underneath, like this, you see. Now, we just lift this into place there. Okay. Now, we might go up to the second last one there, Jimmy. Huh? Now, what you'll find is, I have to lift this way up in order that he can get his side down. Can you tell me when to go up or down there, Jimmy? No, either. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and then, find out the forces since quite a lot of pressure. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you can have to straighten. And then, you straighten this one in a minute as we go along. We'll try and get him as close as you can, if you don't have to be pulling him too much, you know. <laughs> with these two clips you'll never have to force them they'll turn in any direction that you need and what you do is you push them onto the hoop straighten them out no these don't it doesn't go in here like this it goes outside and outside like this now this is exactly the right size 
so your, your tube won't fit into it. So you just open them out about two mil, just a touch, and then this is a spacing nut here. It's to stop people over tightening. You just put him through. On your nut. Leave him loose like that. <laughs> he's he's got a he's here for it. So the the thing you have to consider is that when you tighten this there's going to be a, a long bit sticking out here. Keep him on the inside of the tunnel all the time. So you have to consider which way your thing is going to be. Now we're going to have a bar coming from here now and it's going to slide into here. She's going to tighten up slightly on the inside. Now I have another bar above this going up to a higher level. So I put another one on exactly the same as this and I'll have them on loose. Mm. And then I have another one then for my crop support bar which is going up there. So I'll just put him on and it doesn't matter which way I do him because he'll be facing in the way anyway. So put on all your clips before you do anything. Because it's very hard to put the clip and the bear at the same time if you Bear? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Let's put this way, so slide the hook in my direction. Repeat the process then for each one, you know. Put the video on there. Off. Yeah. Um, and just make sure that your your bar is flush with the end of the clip, because yeah. if it's not, you won't get the top of this yeah. here. You know? mm. I've actually got one slid up there already. That's for the the top prop bar up there. This is for the the crop bar. And these two then are for the two crop bears that come down here. This one again is for the crop bear. Um, well this is my bottom most crop bear, it's 1.65 meters long. So you go into the bottom most clip. This one, and she just slide in there. And she slide into the bottom most one here. This like so you're gonna even push up against that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten this one and then I'm gonna move this in or out till this bar is level. She's fairly good there now. And then I'm going to tighten this one. And very important you keep these down very low, six inches or less, keep them right down at the bottom of the bar. If they're up here then the wind will be able to get leverage on the bar and push it. Keep them right down at the bottom. It's going to be very important to keep these bits on the inside, the point of it. If you have a wrong, take them off and change it again. Now you have to tighten this one out, make sure this is level. So. No, she's level there now, so we'll tighten it down. So this one is your, your 2.5 meter. And just lift him up. Slide him in. And just slide him up till he meets. So the bear is level already. Now you don't want him hanging down like that or up like that. You want him just like that. So we'll tighten him at that then. Oh, it's gone. What happens, crew? It goes on the. You need to use a, a bit. Or else it goes on the, it actually fits on the head of any drill, it's the same shape as a drill head. Um, it's very important that you wear glasses. I just started off real slow. And when you see a bit of steel taking off then, just push it in. 
That's to put a bit of pressure on now, it doesn't go in on its own. Um, it's important to wear goggles because these things will definitely get you in the eye if you don't. But they have to be on the inside of the tunnel so they don't interfere with the plastic which is on the outside. Is there any more of them? The hotspot tape. The plastic should never touch the steel. It doesn't get the steel gets hot in a really hot summer. So what you do is you just pull it on like this. You put it along the top of the bear. It's important to push it on now as you go. Right over the top of the hoop. No, I'll stop that there now, but I'll just show you along the top of the ridges where the plastic might dip. And it must also go obviously here, but it must also go on the gable end here because the plastic could be coming around the corner. It's going to the gable end here because the plastic is coming around the corner. It must also go must also go on this side of the crossbar. Yeah, exactly. And then you can see that the, the ridges above needs to go just on, on them as well. Just anywhere where the plastic might sag and touch. Okay. Now, um, you put on these prop bears. You can see I have clips on already. Everything, all the pointy bits come in. We must put self tapping screws here now. This is our last prop bear then. It comes down here like this. It comes down with a bit of gravel band. That comes up around. There's two holes already pre drilled, two self tapping screws in there. Now, the important thing everywhere where there's gravel band, you must put another screw. Again, on the inside. So, let's say for instance, these are our, our uh, crop support bars. Do that again. So let's say, for instance, these are crop support bars. They click on like this. Let's say, for instance, these are crop support bars. <laughs> they click on like this. And around. The gravel band will come down like this. There's two screws there, one there. The holes are already made. Same here, there and there. Screws already made. You'll also need a self tapping screw in here. Another self tapping screw in here. Um, the crop support bar will be on one side of the ridge here. When you come up here, then you put it on the other side here. And when you go up to the next one, you put it on the other side, and alternators go along. Now, the other thing that you can see here is there was one point where we couldn't get the ridge bar in. It was just the thing was, I'm working out that it was just pulling out a little bit. But, uh, the problem is if it moves after the plastic will come loose, so we just put a self tapping screw in there to hold her. Do you see here up here? At this point here, we didn't get the ridge bearing completely. So what we did then is uh, we put in a self tapping screw just so she wouldn't move afterwards and the plastic wouldn't loosen. That's great. Thanks. Thanks. I've set the timber rail for for this at uh, the height I've chosen is 1330. That's kind of just near the top of the hoop. Um, we're going to attach the palatine now and then we're going to tighten the palatine by pulling this down. So this might come down up to 100 mil, so maybe down here by the time we're finished. Um, it's just attached on with galva band, just wrap it around, keep it nice and tight in there. 
so so that it doesn't get any leverage, you know. So, and then put a self tapping screw in here to keep it in place. Now, when we go to drop or drop this later, when the, task, the plastic is attached for tightening, we'll be taking this out, forcing it down, and putting it, screwing it back in. It's just an ordinary self tapping screw goes into any. Goes in, it just drills straight through the steel. No, the one change we've made from the the poly tunnel, which you saw the clips of earlier with the frame going up, is that instead of um, using just two two prop bars here, and there was another one here going like this, we changed this because this is a higher tunnel. Um, so you have one prop bar here, the same as we had, but it, instead of the one that was a single one going up here, because this is higher, we've changed it, so we put two. One is up here, so two meter bar. And it comes down here then, and it goes straight on to here, which, and then there's another two meter bar going down here. So it's just transferring the wind, the pressure from the wind down into the ground. Um, now the, the other thing I want to show you then is the doors. So these doors are bigger than normal, so that means there's going to be more pressure in the middle. So we have a problem in that. There's as the, the, the plastic is applied here, is, is stuck on, is, is wrapped here, and she's pulling up, and it's inclined to make this twist. So to counteract that, all, and the other possibility is this could even break, you know. There's a lot of strain on it when we're finished. So to, to counteract that, then we just put a bit of galvan band there, put a bit of timber there, just just to, so she's not pulling up and can't break. She's going straight up onto this bar, and just fix that on. Now the same. For exactly the same reasons then, because this is inclined to twist, like this, like we already have a screw down here, a screw up here, I also put a bracket in it, and just put a bit of gavel band there with a few screws in it, just to make that joint very strong, you can do it in any way, but that's just, that works fine. Um, but we have, we have the uh, anti-hot spot tape over the whole of this, we're going to put on the plastic, now we're going to use the same method that we used, um, if you see it on the other, if, if you look at the other um, videos, there's one that says um, putting plastic on using the timber rail method, that was on a smaller tunnel but it's, it's identical to this, and the method that's used, we're going to pull the plastic over the top, tighten from door to door, and we're going to put a couple of battens in each corner, and we're going to put a batten at each hoop, and then we're going to put battens between the battens where, where there's a space, and then we're going to force the timber down then, the timber rail down, and we'll actually show you a clip of that then it's being done. So, now the other thing that is very cold here today is January. We're going to um, put a heater inside, and so the sun is shining as well. The needs to be warm to stress properly. Alright, that's good. Right. Oh, one thing there, um, the heater that a good system, it's a system we always use, is you put down a, your door frame or your door base, level it, you might have to dig it out in some places. Now remember if you dig it out, if you're on a slope and you dig out and you end up going in there, you're actually going down into the ground which will make your door difficult to open. Now we're not too bad here, you just dig away, but in some places you might have to double this up if your ground is very uneven. Now what we do is we just drill a couple of holes and we drive rebars down into it, so we have four rebars along the length of this. And then you bring your base down, one screw in there, one screw in there, keep them level. Bring them up here to the top, a couple of galva bands over, a self tapping screw in each, and your grand solid base is not going to go anywhere. Now you can see the rail, the timber rail system we're using, identical now with what we show on the 10 foot 6, um, or other video showing you how to do the timber rail. This, this rail goes right across the door. Um, and we'll, when we're completely finished with it, then we'll be cutting it off here. Now we've also put a rail on the bottom, this is for the, the netting that's going on the side. We'll be showing you a video of that later, but just to show you what we've actually done, we've already pre-cut this. Because when this is forced down later, it could be down here and it might be very difficult to cut. There's no way we only have to cut the top half and she'll come out when we're finished. Here now we're after tightening along the door, we use three battens, probably might have been better with five, but we got it fairly tight. And then what you do then is you come around here, one day just put a bit of pressure on this, 
reason you're doing that, you just want to take out the, the wrinkles between the first and second. Ooh. So if there's someone pulling on here, and then you put on this back. And then you do the four corners like that. And then you come down to the middle. And you go, you do a batten at each hoop. Do one side, then do the other side. And when you're wrapping these, you don't need to wrap them really tight. Maybe come up about three quarters of an inch and just pull them down. It's on nice and snug. We're going to tighten it next now. We're going to loosen this and, and stand here. I'll give you a shot of that in a minute. But it, the next thing we're going to do is just put the battens between the battens. Now when you roll these, you don't want to roll them so that it's pulling down. You don't want to roll it so it's loose. You just want to keep rolling them so it's exactly the same tension and put screws and all that and then we'll, we'll start forcing it down then to tighten it. Now what we're going to do next now, um, we're going to tighten the palatine by pushing this down. I just made a bit of a hop up there. So I've loosened the inside now, so what I'm going to do, I'll stand up my maiden side and will drive a self tapper in through the galva band. You can see she's loose. She come, do you want to watch out for at the very corners? Put a, a double bit of a uh, Aspect tape here, just on the corner of the timber, just protect that bit because it'll come under a bit of pressure. So we'll do this corner, the other corner, four corners, and then we we'll start working from the middle out. And uh, by then she should be really, really tight. Now at the door we've um, we wrapped the polythene here, you can see it, and battened it on. And then what we've done then is um, Here then, put two screws about every about every ten inches, just so there's no way it can be pulled out. Now what we've got here, um, we've got two five foot doors. So it's 10 foot wide and all, and uh, it's 8 foot high. So there's plenty to get a, a trailer or a jeep into.